Within our vehicles, microservice and mover, we have various types of vehicles and we need to record information about them. Each vehicle will have a unique identifier, a purchase date, a serial number, the make, model and year of the vehicle, the color and additional descriptive text to highlight specific details. In this exercise, we're going to be setting up the database and the associated tables that will contain this information. We will also create a user for our application to connect to the database rather than using our admin user. This will allow us to customize the permissions granted to the application and will help us minimize the impact of potential security breaches. So in our root project here, I'm going to create a scripts folder. So we'll call that scripts. Uh, and then under that scripts folder, I'm going to get a file and I'm going to call it vehicles.sql. The idea behind this file is that I'm going to put any commands that I need in order to create the database into this file so that if I ever need to recreate the database, I have all the commands uh, ready and available. Um, now, hopefully in a production database, I don't ever have to recreate it, but you never know. Um, and the other thing too is to keep in mind that even if you don't recreate it in production, you may want to make a copy of that database somewhere else, like in a development environment or something like that. So regardless, it's always good to have the record of all of the scripts that you've run or all of the SQL commands that you've run somewhere. And we're going to put that here. So let's start by creating the database. So we'll do a create database. And this is going to be called Mover Vehicles. So it's the vehicles database for the vehicles microservice. I'm pre prefixing it with Mover just because that'll allow me to keep all of the Mover related things together in case there's other um, in case there's other tables in here or other databases rather in here. Um, and it also is in case we actually have something else that goes by the name of vehicles. Uh, this gives us a bit of a namespace to operate within. Um, so that's the basic command. Let me just save that uh, and then we'll go ahead and execute it. Over in my CockroachDB terminal, I'm just going to very quickly execute that. Uh, you'll see that finished and we can verify that by doing a show databases. And if we do that, we see that we have the mover vehicles database. So it looks like that worked just fine. Okay, the next thing we need to do is to actually create the table. So I'm going to write a create table statement. Um, and the table I'm going to create, I'm actually going to prefix this with the database name, so mover vehicles, uh, and I'm going to call this the vehicles table. Um, now I don't have to prefix it with mover vehicles. What I could do instead is I could do use mover vehicles to ensure that I'm in the right database when I execute this. Um, but I like to prefix it with the actual context, the database name, um, because that way if I accidentally uh, execute this in the wrong database context, it won't destroy anything or cause any issues. It will just... Um, executed in the proper database context. So I like to be more specific here in this way. Um, so I'm going to do that. And then the next thing is we need to uh, add some columns. So the first column is a U, is an ID. Um, and I'm going to make this a UUID. So this is actually going to be the primary key. Now with the primary key, uh, the, the primary key is actually used to distribute the data in your CockroachDB cluster. Um, and certain data types distribute better than others. So for example, an auto incrementing integer um, creates a lot of hotspots when you distribute it in CockroachDB. Uh, however, a UUID actually distributes very, very well. And so anytime I'm creating a surrogate key in a database like CockroachDB, I want to consider something like a UUID rather than something like an auto incrementing integer, uh, which is a more common pattern in um, non-distributed databases. Um, now, the other thing that I want to do is I want a default value here. Uh, and for a default value, I'm going to use the gen random uh, UUID function. So this is a built-in function in CockroachDB, and it'll generate these IDs for you um, using an appropriate uh, UUID generating algorithm. Um, so you can feel confident when you use this um, uh, you, when you use this, that it's going to follow the UUID spec and that it's not going to create hotspots or anything like that within your system. Um, okay, so that gives me my ID. Then the next thing I need is a purchase date. Uh, now, there's a bunch of different uh, data types that I could use here. Um, I'm going to use a date. 
Uh, I could also use a timestamp or a timestamp TZ, uh, but I don't actually care about the time. I only care about the date. So I'm going to use the date type um, and I want a default value as well for this, uh, but that's going to be the current date. Again, this is a built-in function, um, which will initialize it to whatever the current date is. Uh, then I need a serial number. Now, uh, this is going to be a string, which seems a little odd for um, something that I've labeled as serial number. Um, but um, if you've ever seen a serial number before, they often contain weird, uh, you know, letters and numbers and things like that. Um, so um, I'm not confident that all of my serial numbers will only contain numbers. Um, so I'm going to make it a string just to be safe. Um, but I'm going to make it not null. So I want to make sure that it's always assigned. And then I'll have a make which will be a string and I will have a model which will be a string. Now both of these I want to be not null. Uh, so let's just go ahead and do that. Uh, and then the next thing I want is I want a, uh, a year. Now for the year I could use a date but a date again includes a bunch of information that I don't need like a month and a day. Uh, I don't actually need that. Now the other option is I could uh, just make it an int but ints are a little tricky because the default int in CockroachDB is a 64-bit integer. Um, now, JavaScript and Node.js don't actually support 64-bit uh, integers. Um, they only support 32. And so if I were to try to make this an integer, then what the Node Postgres driver would do is it would actually take that integer and it would convert it to a string when it moves it over into JavaScript. Um, I don't want that. I want it to stay as an integer. So I'm going to make it an int 2, which is the smallest size of integer, because a year is just a four-digit number anyway. Uh, so an int 2 should be more than sufficient. Uh, again, I'm going to make that not null. Um, and then other than that, I need a color. Color is going to be a string, and it's going to be not null. And then I need a description. Now that's going to be a string, but I'm actually going to allow that to be nullable um, because sometimes we may not have any more detailed descriptive text. Um, so I'm just going to leave that as is. And so this is my create table statement. I'll just add the semicolon on to the end there. Uh, I'll give that a save and now we can go and try and execute that. Okay, over in my terminal here, um, you can see that I'm still in the default DB context. Now that's okay because remember, I was very explicit about how I wanted to execute my create table. I included the database name as a prefix. Um, so I could just execute it right here, um, but just for completeness, I'm gonna do the use mover vehicles um, and I'm just going to change to the movers mover vehicles context. Uh, okay, so now that I'm there, now I'm ready to actually go ahead and implement or execute my create table statement. Um, so I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, and now just to verify that worked, I can do show tables. Um, and you can see that it does list that table. And then the other thing I can do is I can do a show create table. And this will be for the vehicles table oops, for the vehicles table. Um, and so you can see the actual create table statement that was executed. Uh, you can see that it added a few additional details that I didn't actually type. Uh, so there's a little bit of magic going on under the hood there, um, but that's okay. Uh, it did everything that I expected to. It created all of the expected columns. The final thing that we need to do is to create a user. So I'm gonna go ahead and cr write a create user statement. Uh, now I'm going to name this user mover um, and I'm going to give them a password. So with password. Now here you're going to want to use a secure password. Um, so you're going to want to generate something maybe with a random combination of uh, letters and numbers and symbols. Um, so you're going to use some kind of secure password. Now I'm not going to show you what password that I'm going to use. Uh, because we all know that showing people your password is a bad practice. Um, and so uh, in actual fact, you may not even want to include this password um, in your vehicles.sql file. Uh, you might want to include that in some sort of um, secure password store of some kind. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a placeholder here. So I'm just going to say secure password. That's a placeholder for the actual password. Uh, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a grant Select um, insert 
and update. So these are the permissions that this user is going to need. Uh, it doesn't need anything beyond those uh, for the purpose of these exercises. Um, in your actual application, maybe you need a few other uh, permissions, but for now, this is gonna be fine. And this will be on the table mover vehicles. So again, I'm being very specific about the context. Um, and then the table name is vehicles. And I wanna grant this to the mover user. Uh, so now we just have to go ahead and execute that. Okay, over in my CockroachDB terminal, I've already executed the create user statement and the, and the appropriate grant statement. Again, just trying to hide the password that I'm using for security purposes. And you always wanna be careful with where you expose these types of details. Um, so suffice it to say, I have uh, executed the necessary statements. Uh, and just to prove that fact, I'm gonna do a show grants on mover vehicles dot vehicles and if you look you can see that we have uh, the insert select and update have all been granted to the mover user um, so that proves that i have created that user and i did in fact grant the necessary permissions so that puts us in a good position and we're now ready to move on to the next set of exercises